Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love every Saturday. Y'all, things are stirring up and heating up in this day and age. When you look at the elections, you look at all the things coming down the pipe, the demonic activity, the sins of the world, the world going cuckoo. As, as some people say, the world is going to hell in a handbasket. But listen, God is still in control. And I want you to hear the transition of what's going on. God wants you to be reminded of how much control he's in and in whom we are to put our trust. Who is our savior? Now, from that, we're going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 2. Starting at verse, the Lord killeth and maketh alive. He bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up. The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifted up. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. <clears throat> For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he hath set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness. For by strength shall no man prevail. And I'm going to stop right here, I believe, verse 10. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces out of heaven, shall he thunder upon them. The Lord, sh the Lord shall judge the ends of the earth and he shall give strength unto his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Now, what I want to start off saying with that is some people think that our savior is going to be Trump. Some people think our savior is going to be Harris, we have a male and a female, and we're looking at the male to save us, some of us. We're looking at the female to save us, some of us. And guess what? Neither one is our savior. Do you hear me? Neither one. What God wants us to do is look to him to be our savior. Guess what, baby? There's one and only one that, that is our savior. J-E-S-U-S. -S. Do you hear me? So for those of you who are on the left wing or on the right wing, whatever, still the same turkey holding both wings. So you can go with that however you want. But the bottom line is, the scriptures God gave me is showing me there is one Savior to remind you, don't put your trust in Trump. Don't put your trust in Kamala. Put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Put your trust in God. God is the one that rules everything, y'all. He puts up one, he sets down another. He does the appointing. He does the using. He does the final analysis. Now, I'm going to share with you what happened. Now, the reason we're having so many problems. Ow! Sorry. <laughs> the reason we're having so many problems in this country is because of what happened in Israel. When you look at the period in history where God appointed judges to rule the, the, the country, the nation of Israel, when he appointed, that was God's program. That was God's system of government. That was a judge. A judge was was he was in touch with God a judge ruled the nation according to God's law according to God's covenant the judges in the book of judges are types of Christ the judges were raised up by the Lord 
and enabled by the Holy Spirit to deliver God's people. Secure rest in the land, that's peace and well-being, and promote obedience to the covenant. Now, you can get that from Judges chapter 2, verses 16 through 19. Do you hear that? All right. I wanted you to get that reference so you would understand. God had his own program. Now, what happened? The people of God started looking at the program of the world, the world system of doing things. And what was the world system of doing things back then? Kings, queens, royalty, all of that. And what did they do with the Lord? They said, we want a king to rule over us like the rest of the world. Why are we so bent on doing things the world's way? Why are we so bent on wanting to do what everybody else does, dabbling our fingers in places where they don't belong, thinking we're going to get ahead faster because God is too slow? God has got too many limitations and we want to spread our wings and go where we want to go, do what we want to do, think what we want to think, say what we want to say, be what we want to be. Hmm, isn't that something? This is how society is to this day. Everybody wants to do what is right in their own eyes. They could care less what God has to say from the leaders on down, y'all. So my question to you is who is your savior? Where are you putting your trust? In Kamala Harris, Donald Trump, or Jesus Christ, God the Son? There are powers that be that we don't hear about. Those are the ones that carry probably the 1% of the wealth in this whole world, which is more wealthy than the rest of the world put together. That 1% carries all the wealth, carries all the weight, pulls all the strings. They are the puppets. They are the puppet masters, and all the leaders of the countries are puppeteers. We don't see it that way. We see each leader as an individual. No, 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 no. It's a woven tapestry that the world system has put together. And we're caught up at the bottom of the barrel not really knowing what's going on because they are above and we're down at the bottom trying to figure it all out. So you're sitting there putting your trust in flesh. And I ask you, when you have a savior, why? Why is it that important to you? The one that pulls the strings to the whole world, to the destiny of mankind, is God. Not Trump, not Paris, neither one of them. Whew. You have to remember that when you get caught up in the things of the world, the cares of this world, you are living way beneath your privilege, way beneath your, your privilege. However you choose, whether you choose to vote, whether you choose not to vote, whether you choose to get involved in this one or that one, the main thing you better choose to do is, is pray and get God's heart. Because no matter what happens in this world, no matter what happens in this country, God is the ultimate one in control. Now, because he is invisible, we want to put our trust in what we see, what we hear, what we smell, what we feel, all of that. We want to make sure that everything is tangible for us. If it's tangible, it makes sense. If it's invisible, it's a fairy tale. No, baby. The biggest reality is in the invisible. So let's get back to that little thing I said was silly. All right. 
you've got a right wing and a left wing, the Democrats, and you've got the Republicans. Now listen to this. That's why you got to pray. Listen to this, y'all. You look at me, you see an, an old woman, 71 years old, with a right hand and a left hand. Can you imagine the right hand and the left hand fighting each other? Not only that, can you imagine people coming up to me saying, I only want to be friends with your right hand. I don't like your left hand. And somebody else saying, oh, I like the left hand. That does this and that does that. I don't like the right hand because that, that right hand thinks he wants to do it all. You got two hands belonging to the same body. And you guys are fighting tooth and nail, losing family members, losing friendship, breaking up all kind of relationships over my right hand and my left hand. But they both belong to me. Think about that. Just, just let that sink in for a minute. And guess who rules and controls me? If I yield myself, God, if I don't yield myself and I rebel against God, guess who still is in control? God. Now, I'm going to make another point. Let's look at King Saul, shall we? Go with me to 1 Samuel chapter 8. All right? <laughs> this is interesting. I wasn't sure what God wanted me to talk about till he gave me these. And I said, okay, this is perfect for the election. All right, listen. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. Hmm. And it came to pass, starting at verse 1, when Samuel was old and he made his sons judges over Israel. Now the name of his firstborn was Joel, and the name of his second, Abiah. They were judges in Beersheba. And his sons walked not in his ways, but turned aside after lucre and took bribes. Isn't this something how money spoils everything, the love of it, and perverted judgment? Then, we're at verse 4 now. Then all the elders of Israel gathered themselves together and came to Samuel unto Ramah and said unto him, Behold, thou art old, and thy sons walk not in thy ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the nations. Mm, here we go, leaning to our own understanding. Think about it now. Leaning to the ways and the systems of the world, the world system of doing things. All right. Something about us as human beings, we live by the motto, monkey see, monkey do. And we, ooh, 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 look what they did. Ooh, ooh, I want to do what they're doing. Monkey see, monkey do. Because God is invisible. We want to do what we see. Hmm. We believe in what we see. We trust in what we see. Interesting, huh? Okay, so, oh my goodness. How many of you have gotten into arguments about the difference of opinion as to which one is the right one? Kamala or Trump, which one is the right one? Harris or Donald, I mean, everybody is like, what, 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 which one, which one? And they're fighting each other tooth and nail, and they get on YouTube, and they say, oh, you're for this one. Well, I can, I'm, I got to unsubscribe from you. What? Doesn't it sound silly when you really break it down to what's really going on? It's all divisive. God is not the author of confusion, y'all. And he has never told us to put our trust in man. But that's what we do. I do me and you do you, boo. Mm -hmm. Now, here we go. Let's finish reading. 
<laughs> Six, I'm going to repeat that again. But the third, but the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed unto God. Now check out God. I tell you, God is big. I'm telling you, he ain't petty like we are. Check this out. And the Lord said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people and all that they say unto thee. For they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. How much can you look around this world when you look at what they're doing in the schools, when you look at what they're doing in the cities and the and all these organizations and the the race uh the, the the race unrest, the financial pitfalls, the crap that's going on, the how they are controlling our behavior. They're trying to manipulate how we think, manipulate how we feel, manipulate what we do, how we spend our money. I mean, they are manipulating left and right, and we are going for the okie doke, chomping it all down like it's all good for us. All right, so you have to listen. God said, they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. That's what we do in this society. We reject God at every time. No more prayer in school, rejecting God. We want to get the word God out of in God we trust, rejecting God. We don't, you can say Buddha, Mohammed, you can say all of these other people, but you better not say Jesus on the air, rejecting God. What is it about this system? You go to school and if a parent wants their child to follow the Lord, have Bible study, not go into this, this new agenda they've got going on which stirs up confusion and suicides. It's all rejection of God. Think about it. And we are all for it. We're all for it. That's the sad part. We don't realize how much we reject God when we put our trust in a politician. You don't see it, do you? Open your eyes. I remembered I was watching a video a while back and it brought me to tears. I could feel the move of the Holy Spirit as they showed the comparison of putting trust in man and putting trust in God. And they, they went down the hole. I mean, it just, it moved me. I understood. It's like, that's exactly where we are. It is so sad how much we are looking I mean, people were looking for Biden to save the seniors. Oh, he's going to come to our rescue. That little measly $200 a month never did happen over the whole span of his, of his term. It never happened. And there were videos on YouTube left and right. Stimulus over here. Stimulus over here. Stimulus everywhere. Stimulus stopped happening and never did happen again. Because we were putting our trust in the system. The system is not your savior. The worldly ways of doing things will not make life better for you. It will stir up more strife, more division, more confusion, more hatred, more hopelessness, more poverty more greed, more treachery, ultimately more death, physically and spiritually. But that's what we want. We want us a king like the rest of the world. Yeah. So what happens? Let's continue reading this story. Verse 8. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought you up out of Egypt, even unto this day, wherewith they have forsaken me and served other gods, so do they also unto thee. Nine. Now, therefore, hearken unto their voice, howbeit yet protest solemnly unto them, and show them the manner of the king that shall reign over them. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, this will be the manner of the king 
that shall reign over you. He shall take your sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen. In other words, the draft, the soldiers, the army. And some shall run before his chariots, and he shall appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifty, and will set them to ear his ground and to reap his harvest and to make his instruments of war and instruments of his chariots and he will take your daughters to be confectionaries and to be cooks and to be bakers he will take your fields and your vineyards and your olive yards even the best of them and give them to his servants and he shall take the tenth of your seed there go to taxes and of your vineyards and give to his offices and to his servants and he shall take your man servants and your maid servants and your goodliest young man and your asses and put them to his work how many of you have watched your husbands your sons your brothers your fathers go off to war, go off to this country, go off to that country, go on overseas to deal with something that has nothing to do with us. Why? Because the heads of the country see it so. That's the way they want it. So they don't go over, the heads of the country don't go over and challenge the heads of another country and duke it out in a fighting ring. No, they send your sons, your husbands, your brothers, your fathers, to do their dirty work. But that's how you want it. Because you want the king, the presidents, the leaders of the country, the way the world system does it, not the way God's system does it. Oh, you don't want his ways. All right, let's keep going. Ha! Huh. And you shall cry out in that day because of your king, which he shall have chosen. <laughs> Yeah, the one you chose, the one you picked, yeah, that's the one going to bring tears to your eyes. Think about what he's saying here. Apply it to today. The ones you are vehemently for, rather than being vehemently for God, you're resting your trust on these two human beings that are nothing more than flesh, like you. You're looking to them for the answers. God is the answer to everything, y'all. Don't lose sight of that. <sighs> the one thing we have to remember when we read that scripture and we read the story about how they, they wanted a king, and God sent Samuel to, to anoint Saul to be king, right? And Saul did good for a while. But then Saul got full of himself. See, that's why no matter what, you better pray God stays in control. <laughs> he can release his hand and say, y'all all have it your way. Don't come to me for nothing. You don't want that. So here we have God appointing Saul. And what does Saul do? Saul does what God wants for a minute. But then Saul starts doing what Saul wants. You know, we get a little whiff of ourselves, get a little power, and boy, we get we get <laughs> foot loose and fancy free. And then we start wreaking havoc on everybody. So what happens next? The people are crying to God to deliver them from the king they asked for. And God said, don't come to me. You got it? You want kings? It's going to be kings from now on. It's going to be your way, Wendy. Okay, I just had to add that in because we forget the consequence that happens when God lets us have it our way, when it goes against his way. So the moral of that story is be careful what you ask for. And let me add, be careful what you vote for. Pray. Continuing to read on, nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, nay, but we will have a king over us. And that's the way there are a lot of Christians out there, a lot of Christian organizations pushing for this one. Then you got Christian organizations pushing for that one. 
Ra Ra Boom Ba. Oh yeah, this one's gonna save the day. This one's gonna do this and do that, and that one's gonna do this and do that. When you look at both of them, you got one that doesn't care about the poor. You got the other that is trying to reach out for the poor, but they both have sins in them. That they are both imperfect. They are both sin laden with treacherous acts that nobody hears about because the government keeps all that on the down low. We don't hear about the treacherous acts that they've done to other countries and other people and people right here in this country and things they don't release to the people because they want to keep certain people under and certain people above and they want to make sure that they keep that chasm there because the rich get richer as long as the poor gets poorer. They don't, they don't show all that little systematic stuff. Both parties are guilty, y'all. But both parties have done good as well. Just like with my two hands. My two hands have yielded themselves to God. But before I yielded me to God, both of these hands did treacherous acts. Both of these hands sinned. Both of to this day, if I chose to reject God, both of these hands could go back to sin in a New York minute. All God has to do is raise his Holy Spirit by about an inch and I'm lost in the sauce. You got to be careful who you put your trust in, y'all. The thing to do is pray that God chooses the one he can use the most. That's it. And then ask God to give you his heart. But don't have your own opinions because your opinions are worth a hill of beans in comparison to God's knowledge, in comparison to God's wisdom. You pray God puts in office the one that's going to do the best because we're really looking at the lesser of two evils. The bottom line, the bottom line. But listen, listen, while you are trying to figure out who's evil and who's best, remember this. God will take, he already said it in his scripture, God will take the strong one and he knows how to make him weak. While he can take the weak one and knows how to make them strong. So no matter what your opinion is of who's the best one, who's the righteous one, who's the one that's going to do more for the poor, Who's the one that's going to do more for the rich and forget the poor? Who's the one that wants to do this to the country and do that to the country so that the rich have it all and the poor is just kind of moved out the way and forgotten about? The bottom line is it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know why? Because God can take the worst choice and make them his instrument. Now you can decide in your mind which one is the worst choice. Think about that. But think about God's power over either one. God can take the worst choice, whether it's him or her. God can take the worst choice and make them the savior, not the savior, but make them come to more people's rescue and to more people's needs, even if they came in determined not to. So that's why I'm saying, see, God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts higher than our thoughts. Our little pea brains can't figure it out. The best thing to pray is God's will be done. The best thing to pray is that God send his mercy for the sake of his people that are in this country. The best thing to do is pray that God does not allow the government to forget the poor. No matter which side we're on, it doesn't matter. See, a man's mind can change at a dime. God can take a heart and flip it around. There's an old story where this, this I don't know if she was a widow or just a poor woman, but she was going to this uh, judge. The judge didn't care about, uh, he didn't care about man. He didn't care about about God. He didn't care about the goodness of anything. He was all about himself. Uh, 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 two little stories. 
In this one, where Jesus said, use importunity as you pray. That means be persistent. The changes you want to see in this country, the changes for good, the changes that will please God that you want to see in this country, you pray for that. Don't pray for the people. Pray, pray that God moves through those people. Or better yet, pray that God saves both of them. Because if they have the spirit of God moving in them, this country would be better off. You know how I know that? There's a scripture that says righteousness, not money, not power. Righteousness exalts a nation. Now, here you have this king, I mean, this judge, and this woman is coming at him. I want you to, to vindicate me. I need help. I need help. I need help. And the judge could care less about her. He could, you know, like, shoot, fly, fly. He could care less. But guess what? When God got through with it and her importunity kicked in, like we should be when we pray, we pray once. No, you pray. You not. You keep on knocking, you ask, you keep on asking, you seek, you keep on seeking, you pray, keep on praying. Now, this woman did it until she got a breakthrough. And what was her breakthrough? Oh, give the woman what she wants, lest she wear me out. That's one story. Number two, here's a story where God did the changing of the heart. This, this uh, servant of a king. He was afraid of the king because the king could care less about God. He could care less about people. He could care less. But guess what? The man went to God. He didn't go to the king. He went to God first. And he asked God to touch the king's heart so that when he put in his request, the request will be granted according to God's will. So what happens? He goes to the king and he's, I mean, he goes to God and he's praying this. He's, I don't know if he fasted. Don't remember that part. I'm going by memory, y'all. So he prays and he prays. And then he's, he's given the green light to go to the king. Now he goes to the king because he already went to the king of kings first. That's where his trust lied, not in the king. So he goes to the king now after he's dealt with the king of kings and he asked the king his request. The king says, what's bothering you? I see your countenance is down, blah, blah, blah. He says, yeah, well, I need this. My people need that. And, and we're having a problem. I'm just making it real quick. I'm not going into detail. I want you to get the point. And the king granted him even more than what he asked. Why? God touched the king's heart. He didn't go to the king trusting in the king's goodness and the love of the king's heart. He went to the king of kings. Y'all, society, America, the world, you need to go to the king of kings to touch the heads of your countries. That's what you need to do. Your trust should lie nowhere near a king a leader, a president, whatever you call these guys that run these countries, your trust should remain in God at all times. You want the president to do this, that, or the other? You talk to the king of kings. You want the king of this country to do this, that, or the other? You go to the king of kings. No matter what you want done, you go to the king of kings, y'all. You go to the king of kings. Stop putting your trust in flesh. God could inhale and Trump could drop dead in a dime. Kamala could drop dead in a dime. Then who are you going to put your trust in? Who are you going to be having fights over next? No, God is your source, y'all. Please don't forget that. God is our creator. God created you and me in love. God said it is good. He created man. Don't think that man can ride on their own, their own power. It's just, no, I'm sorry. You're no more than a roach in comparison to God. Don't think that you have it like that. You don't. You better trust God, y'all. Pray to God when you go 
to vote. Pray to God if you choose not to vote. Whatever you choose, pray to God to find out his will for you as an individual. Then you do you, boo, according to God's will. How's that? And this country, hopefully, will one day rise up to that word. Righteousness exalts a nation. And let's pray to that extent that this nation turns back to righteousness. Righteousness is not only, and I'm, I'm, I'm closing, righteousness is not only making sure that we follow scripture, making sure that we follow the laws, the rules, and the wherewithal of God, because you're looking at certain things that are important to you, but you forget the things that are important to God which is taking care of the poor, the widow, the hungry, the immigrants, the stranger. Ooh, see what I mean? So you have to look at this thing in a balanced manner. They both do parts of the will of God, but they also both are full of sin and treachery. Lies. Ha! So that's why you have to pray to the king of kings because ultimately baby he is the only one in control and he is the only one in whom we should put our trust in god we trust does that work for you or would you rather say in trump we trust or in kamala we trust think about that the right hand and the left hand there it goes i leave you with that <laughs>